right. And we are live. Hello, everyone. This is a Beer Belly Cop podcast. Sorry for the, the wait, and we're on. Um, we were just waiting for someone, but he was a very special someone, so it was worth it. <laughs> very late um, someone. Today we have uh, Steve um, Purple Eye on the call. Um, you know, it, it's been a while. <laughs> and it's, very late someone. Oh, wait a minute. I hear, I hear, I hear, <laughs> I hear a stream somewhere. Somebody has the stream. All right. Okay. No, I got it. Taking care of it. We have, uh, we have, uh, Ted, Ted Nagy here. Um, Hi. Beer connoisseur. And, uh, Tom Kuba. Hello. Right. That's how you say your name, right? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> and, uh, and this, I'm Chris Donovan. Um, so how was everyone doing today? Um, what have you guys been up to? Actually did some traveling recently. Nice. Went to Vermont for four days, and then I went shortly after that went to Dogfish. Nice. So I've been drinking some beers, seeing some awesome sights and things I never knew existed. Yeah, man, you've been busy. Yeah, it's been fun. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so so in Vermont, um, what uh what what brewers did you visit up there? Uh, we went to a lot of places. Uh, we went to the flagship Alchemist. You have to go to Alchemist if you go to Vermont. They, you know, they're the ones who brew Heady Topper and Focal Banger, basically Vermont's flagship beers, if you ask me. Um, we also went to Hill Farmstead, which is another top-notch brewery for the whole country. They don't really, they're not huge, but their their beers are off the charts. Their IPAs are of a different kind, and what's interesting too is like. We were in the, all in this minivan, six of us, and it felt like we were driving for like two hours up a mountain and didn't see one single car. But then all of a sudden we got to Hill Farmstead. We got to like into the little town where they are, and then you see cars starting to be parked on the side of the road. Like, no way. These All these people are at Hill Farmstead. Sure enough, it's a farm. Wow. It's like a big farm. It looks like a, it looks like a festival going on, but it's just people at the brewery drinking beer. Wow, that's awesome. Everyone in Vermont. In the, in the right hand corner of Vermont, are at the brewery, <laughs> and it's like is, straight up a hill. Like in that area of Vermont, is there a lot of other stuff to do, or is it really just like, like not the in that area? And breweries and stuff. In the, in that particular area, there's not. But I mean, there's a lot of ski industry in Stowe and like Warren, where we stayed, and I'm sure like the, the restaurants in Burlington were really good. Wow, that's awesome. It's an awesome place to go if you like to ski or mountain bike. Or hike. Just and a lot of excellent beers. A lot of excellent beers. I mean, if you're a foodie, if you're like you enjoy beer, Vermont is the place to go. You can pretty much go anywhere and get a good beer and some good food. Nice. We awesome. spent some time in Burlington. I went to a bunch of breweries there. One particularly, I remember, called Four Quarters. And it was in this little town called Winooski. And their beer also, yeah, also amazing. Like what kind of style did, uh, did they kind of? They had a lot of sours there? on when I was there. A lot of sours were going. Dude, and, like a lot of breweries are going for the sours, but yeah, yeah. it was refreshing because it was hot there. It was like warm that yeah. day, so I went for um, two different sours. One was pickle juice. It was called dill pickle. It wow. Was, <laughs> like picture of a sour beer with the aftertaste of a pickle juice. So that uh, was so that was very kind of like a vinegary kind of a aftertaste, kind of like. No, more like garlic. Oh. Like garlic oh, and garlic. Pale. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> and then the other one was uh, <laughs> the sour, the sour, but it was a wit beer with mango and raspberries. Wow! It was blew my mind. I actually, got a four pack, brought that home. We actually, we actually had it. I think we drank one. <laughs> Chris doesn't <laughs> remember. Did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was at. I was actually for the listeners. Um, I was at a. Uh, Ted's house it was last weekend, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> wow, that this week's gone. Uh, yeah, and we uh, we tried some beers out, and we, we there's some really good beers coming up in in New Jersey. Um, tried some stuff from uh, what's the name of the place? Icarus. Oh, Icarus. Yeah. Oh man, Yachus, the the double IPA Yachus. Oh, Yachus. so good. Um, just a beautiful beer. Um, it's hard. Like once you start having beers like that, it's hard to drink other beers in that same style and enjoy them as much yeah you kind of always are reaching for that upper tier beer in yeah, my opinion you know 
and I and I've tried. Um, you know, I've I've been lucky enough to get some trillium a, a bunch of times because uh, my uh, brother-in-law um, lives up there in Boston, so he was always bringing down like uh, trillium beers. Yeah, that's awesome. And uh, honestly, like they're like those are up right up there with trillium. Like, yeah. If 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 anything, it might be better than some of them. So. It's pretty yeah, amazing. I think it's safe to say that that Yacht Juice may be the best beer in Jersey at the time. Yeah. So Yacht Juice is definitely recommended if anyone can get a hold of that. Um, also, just to mention, we have some, uh, you know, for any listeners out there um, on the stream, um, feel free to, to type in the chat. On, we're doing YouTube Live. This is a little different this time. If you have any questions for us, we'll see them. Um, we'll, we can answer them in real time. So uh, thanks for listening. All right, so um, on to some other updates. Uh, I just wanted, you know, to put a little plug in there for uh, Fat Foodaholics, my blog. Um, so last last week we tr- we talked about um, me eating the death nut, and I still haven't done it yet. <sighs> I'm very disappointed in myself, and I'm very scared actually to try it. Uh, Steve, did you uh, did you did you hear about that? The death no, nut? no, it's the death nut. So the death nut is this thing. And it's going to be backwards on the screen probably. Yep, it is. But um, it's it's called the death nut challenge. It's kind of like the one chip, but it's okay. like nuts. And you have five stages of nuts. And just to put it this way, warming up is ghost peppers oh. and Carolina Reaper. Wow. And then the <laughs> hottest nut has the hottest nut known to mankind with it's hotter than the Carolina Reaper, the Pepper X. I've never even so, heard of that pepper. That yeah, it's a new crazy. pepper. Um, it's developed by the good old um, what's uh, what's the name of that company? Oh, yeah, the Pucker Butt Company. <laughs> oh, nice. Company. <laughs> so it's the same guy that did uh the Carolina Reaper uh cultivating the Carolina Reaper. He also cultivated um with some different hybrids and stuff the the Pepper X. Uh-huh. And dude, it's supposedly. So the Carolina Reaper is like two point something, two point five million Scovilles. Mm. The Pepper X is like three point two million. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so it's up there. So I'm kind of scared, and um, I just know I'm gonna have to really commit to it, and probably my weekend will be ruined whenever I try it. So <laughs> been, this is why I've been waiting to not not try it. But uh. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. So another thing is um, I just made my own new concoction. It's a recipe. It's called Oktoberfest Pizza. And I'm oh. going to put the recipe up for that on Fat Foodaholics. And um, it was an experiment and actually went pretty pretty well. It has pretzel crust dough with, um, with some mustard spread on top of it and a pizza, you know, pizza kind of size um, with uh, sauerkraut, Gruyere cheese um, melted on top with uh, sliced bratwurst. That's oh, awesome. So, wow. uh, so you know, listeners and everyone, um, just uh, be stay tuned for that. Yeah, I'll be looking for that. Awesome. That sounds amazing. So, so Steve, we haven't talked to you in a while. Like, how's how's, how's like Chicago going? Uh, Chicago. It's good. It's good. Uh, we've had a really hot, humid summer, and then last week it was like kind of cold. Now it's back to being kind of warm again. So. I think I think it's kind of nice weather here, but yeah, it's good. Mm, kind of um, warm. So, that's, maybe that's what's coming to us. Yeah, your weather comes to us. Yeah, so a lot of good beers here. around. Um, I haven't really been branching out too much, just drinking the same old stuff. And uh, but I am going to Milwaukee this weekend, so hopefully I find a good brewery or two up there to check out. Awesome. Yeah. So, uh, so one of one of Ted's friends, we were just talking about this. He uh, was mentioning that the the beer there is what is it clear, Ted? Yeah, it is says that... there's no. Um, we call them dirty haze bombs. <laughs> oh, that's what. That's okay. Like when when I what I showed you with the glass with the um, the yacht juice, how you can't see your hand through the back of the glass up against the light. There's not there's none of that out there. So like see, it, that's interesting. So this is you know the 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 new the eastern nor nor New England style. IPAs, they've kind of just like take, taken over the East Coast. Yep. But I guess they haven't really reached Chicago yet, so that, I thought that was pretty interesting. Yeah, I'm not yeah, sure if they haven't, haven't reached really. it or if he just doesn't have any out there. But uh, have you seen any, Steve? Have you seen any like really hazy beer? 
It, look, it looks almost like juice. It, yeah, it um, looks and feels like juice. You know, I, I did see like one or two of those. Um, one was at a, a kind of a small brewery, but so I think maybe they're maybe some of the breweries are starting to experiment with that that style, but it's not really widespread. Like I don't see it in stores or anything. Yeah, Heavy Reel does it a lot too up by us. I mean, it's like three minutes from my house, and all, almost all his beers are hazy like that, hazy, juicy IPAs, and they're just delicious. You know, him and him and Icarus really have something good going on. Yeah, that's awesome. And uh, Tom, so you you go to Chicago for uh, Riot Fest, right? Yes, except for this year. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Um, but they they have uh, actually Riot Fest. Uh, when I went back in 2013, was the first place that uh, had uh, that root beer beer, not your father's uh, root beer. Uh-huh. Yeah. I, Never seen it before, uh, anywhere. It was on tap at, at the the bar in the hotel, and it was like, it it was a lot stronger than what it was in the bottles, and I think that was one of the greatest things that I found out there. Um, when I went out, when I went out there, but uh, after the last couple of years, I've been going out there, I've been getting into uh, Revolution. Uh, that 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 stuff is pretty good. Yeah, they they make a lot of good beer. One one of my favorites is the uh, the summer seasonal, the uh, Rosa. It's like got a uh, hibiscus. It's oh. it's really delicious. I don't think I've I've had that. I've, I don't know what they serve at uh, some of the bars. Obviously, uh, the IPA yeah. is uh, obviously po- more popular now. Um, th- there's a couple other. I don't know if it's still the same. Uh, if it was Revolution, but they had like. Uh, Wonder, not Wonder Bread, but it was like Wonder Wonder Beer or something like that. Mm. It was like a, a citrusy type. It was it was pretty good too. But this cool. was like last year that I had it, so I yeah I can't tell you if it was still good. <laughs> <laughs> not familiar with that one, but I'll, I'll I'll keep an eye out. So on to other things. Um. So this this hurricane that's coming up, I just wanted to mention it just because we hear it, we've been hearing about it everywhere, and it kind of sucks too because I had a I had a vacation planned to go down to uh, North Carolina. Guess when? <laughs> Next Sunday. <laughs> I was supposed to go to the Outer Banks. So, uh, yeah, that kind of sucks. So is it officially canceled? Uh, it, it it's 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 looking like it's canceled. Uh, <laughs> so your brother was right. Yeah, he was right. He was right. Uh, Trevor lives in Wilmington. Wow. Trevor Trevor oh. lives in Wilmington, Chris. Wilmington. Oh man. He's like, yeah, so, I don't know if we're gonna leave. I'm like, get, get out of there. <laughs> yeah, he needs to get out of there. That, that's yeah, no joke. Needs... Yeah. It's such a big storm though. It's gonna impact like hundreds of miles wherever it makes landfall yeah. you're gonna have to go far to get out of its path yeah yeah no it's it's a big storm and uh yeah it, it's you know it's in, in, inconveniencing to not you know go to vacation but it sucks for people's houses and stuff that are in the way and i you know yeah. we, we experienced it through sandy you know not me personally but our area and it's pretty pretty devastating but on some more happy news, let's talk about some beer news. Beer news. Yay. Actually, no, wait, wait. First, before beer news, we are supposed to talk about untapped beers that you've drank. So mm. sorry, that was a, that was a little uh, like fake out there. Wow. So, um. Well, I have bad news. We, what? What's I haven't what's used untapped in like a year. That's okay. You can just what use your use your mind. Use your mind. <laughs> There's too many to list. Too many b- new beers to list. Um, let's see what the heck have I been drinking? That's a, that's very good. Double dry hop yacht juice. Yes, my, probably my favorite beer to date. And we just talked about that. that was amazing. Yeah, I'm currently drinking another beer from Icarus called Kalishna Coffee, and it's a Russian Imperial Stout coffee. Russian Imperial Coffee Stout, and it's amazing. It's 14%. 
and it rolls. Um, Fourteen. Is it is it very alcoholy or not at all? Yeah. Not one bit. Uh, what else do I have? Have I had in the most recent? A lot of Vermont beer, like Hattie Topper, Vocal Bang. I brought a lot of that back. A lot of Alchemist. A lot of uh, a lot of IPAs from up there. A brewery called Frost Brewing, which is just crazy, crazy good. Just it's amazing how many breweries can be that good. You know what I mean? You drink that beer, it's like yes, this is it. Yeah. But, yeah, definitely. How about you guys. Um, I just recently had like a um, like a a local beer. Um, it's kind of hard. I don't think you can really find it anywhere else. It's extremely like it's in a. It's pretty much just like a almost like a homebrew, but from uh, this uh the cidery that I go to, uh, Penning Penning's Farm Cidery. They they grow their own hops, and I guess they sell their hops to certain brewer brewers. And uh, I just recently got to try um, a beer from one of those beers that were made from their hops. Um, it's pretty good. Uh, it was a little different. It's uh, called a uh, um, IP. L instead of an IPA, so it's an imperial, not imperial, sorry, <laughs> India Pale Lager. Um, so it's it was very interesting. You get a little bit of like a hops at the beginning, like you can taste. It almost tastes like it. It's going to be an ale, but then it turns into like a, like it almost tastes has like a roasted character to it. it. Like would trick you into thinking there's like coffee mixed into it. It was very strange. Mm. I'm not sure what would cause that. Maybe I'm just accustomed to to drinking, um, IPAs. So maybe, maybe the lager tastes it's kind of throw me off with all the, like the extra hops. I don't know. Yeah, maybe it's the combination of the hops and what makes it a lager. Like it's, is it more like a hoppy lager? Yeah, it's like a hoppy lager, um, extra hopped lager. Yeah, I would say. Um, I wonder if it has something to do with the malt characters. Yeah, maybe. Maybe it's just. Who knows? Maybe there was something wrong with the beer. I don't know. I, but Ted, I'm I have a, I'm gonna reserve one for you since since you're close and uh, yeah, definitely. I, mean, I, I can actually probably there. send one to Steve too. But <laughs> thanks. But, um, for... And then maybe Tom. Tom, I'll bring it to work. We'll crack one open at work. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But uh, we'll we'll see. Um, yeah, maybe I, you have uh, an opinion what, of it. Uh, Magic Hat made um, an IPL uh, Dream Machine. That and from what I remember, um, they had it on tap at a bar I used to live by. It was it was good. It was it was my first ever IPL, and it was like it was it was weird. It I was expecting an IPA, but it w- didn't finish like an IPA. It, it started, but it, it it was like a lager, like you said, a hoppy lager. But it was yeah, yeah. very kind of refreshing for me. I enjoyed it a lot. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I think we're gonna see more and more of the um, the uh, IPLs coming up. It's just another new character, um, new new, what you call it? Category. Can't what are you talk. guys? What are you guys drinking right now? So I'm drinking a a Brooklyn uh, Bel Air sour, just because. Nice. I'm trying to get that those sours in before uh, yes. before the summer's over. You know, I'm still mm-hmm. still I refuse to go to those pumpkins yet. Yeah, no yeah. pumpkins <laughs> ever. <laughs> Never. Unless it's dogfish pumpkin head or pumpkin. Yeah, I know. That's exactly. I, I, my tradition's been pumpkin. Honestly, the quality's been. I've been reading about this too. The quality of the pumpkin has been apparently going down a little bit. I yeah, notice. I, I notice it's not tasting as good. I don't know if it's just me. Did you notice that too, Ted? Or yeah, I did. Or? I I just I can't drink them anymore. I don't know if it's my taste, my palate changes or whatever. I've mm-hmm. tried local pumpkin beers. I've tried the big names. Dogfish seems to be like the most balanced one of them all, and I can tolerate it, but I'm not going to go buy it. Just, I'm just sure mine. I'm, sh- I'm sure someone's coming out with like an IPA pumpkin beer. I'm sure that already exists somewhere. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sure. I'm going right. to look for it now. Imperial pumpkin <laughs> ale. <laughs> Imperial pumpkin. Well, there's definitely Imperial pumpkin well, ales. Indian pumpkin in- ale. Yeah. yeah, India pale ale pumpkin. Or, or, there's, or haze bomb, as Indian you would call it. Pumpkin haze bombs for days. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And 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 uh, Tom, did you already answer your untapped? Um, right now I'm drinking. Uh, I don't know if you can see this, but this is. I think we talked about it in the Jim last B. One. Oh yeah, we did talk yeah, about. I saw it. that today. <laughs> I am what actually very pleased with this. 
it doesn't taste like Budweiser. It's very smooth. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it does have like a little like like a, a little hint of like vanilla. After. Oh yeah, for those listeners, I'm sorry. It's a okay. Budweiser uh, aged in Jim Beam. Yes, like it's Barrels, an upper right? lager. It, it's six point two percent. It, you know what? It it it's incredibly smooth. I'm like I said, I'm very impressed with it. Uh, it's not the greatest, you know, beer. But I I can definitely have a couple and enjoy it. Yeah, I mean, I, honestly, I have no, you know, a lot of beer snobs will say, you know, screw that shit. But I think, you know, drink what you want to drink. My opinion. I might try it just because it's new. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I say give it a tr- give it a shot. You you might be impressed, you know, with it. Yeah. I mean, so it doesn't taste like a regular butter, but like it has it has more flavor. It has more. I don't know something about it, like. And you're drinking it right out of the bottle, right? Um, I, yeah. That's the way to do it. <laughs> oh, this is empty now, but. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Hey, there's nothing wrong with an icy cold like Bud Light or Coors Light after you're done cutting the grass or something oh, no. like. Yeah. You know, super hot summer day. You come home from work and that's all that's there. I I, I like the I like the you know I like PBR I like Iron City. I like the, you know, I guess the lower end, if you want to call it, beers. I enjoy those, you know. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. I, I'm down with that, too. Yeah. I'm a lover of all beers. Exactly. Except pumpkin beer. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Yeah, that can get old quick. Yeah, there's there's a time and place for that. It's like October and Maybe a couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah, it's gotta be gotta be cold in November. Yeah, and yeah, about two weeks. That's about all I can take of those. I'm not a big fan of Belgians either. A lot of, I don't do Belgians very well. Something yeah. about something about what's in those. I guess it's the yeast that makes it makes me like super bloated the next day, mm-hmm. and I just feel like crap. They are very distinctive. It's either, either you love them or hate them, I guess. Well, yeah, yeah. It depends, but all right. So, what you guys all have been waiting for? It's beer news time. Beer news. Beer news. Beer news. Beer news. Beer news. Beer news. <laughs> we we need to really start coming up with like some jingles for our our shit, you know. <laughs> yeah, you got a guitar back there. We have. I mean, we, yeah, I mean. We're you know musicians here. We we can make some we can make some songs. <laughs> yeah. Some some Steve will come in with some slap bass. Boop, 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 boop. Yeah. Beer news. Beer news. Beer news. Boop, 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 boop. I don't know. We can think something. <laughs> but uh, so on some beer news. So we 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 we've been talking about this a lot uh, through podcasts. But uh, the whole invasion of marijuana in the whole beer scene. Um. So, one article recently that I came across, um, it's Heineken. It recently just came out with, um, it's not necessarily a beer, so this is a little outside of our thing, but uh, it, it, it contains, it's like a, it's a, a calorie-free kind of like beer that contains CBD and THC, and it's called Hi-Fi Hops. And it's kind of, uh, I guess, it has like a certain, uh, as five milligrams of THC and five milligrams of CBD. So I guess it's supposed to make you feel a little buzzed without the alcohol. Um, made by uh, Lagunitas Brewing Company. I thought that was pretty interesting. So like all these 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 breweries are are kind of, I guess, shaking in their shoes with legalization. I don't know. <laughs> but um, what do you guys think about that? I think it's cool. I just wish I could try it. <laughs> yeah, no, that's the thing. Like, yeah. I like it's one of those things we can't really try because <laughs> it's illegal in New York. It's illegal in New Jersey. Is it illegal in Chicago? I mean, <laughs> I don't think specifically so. Specifically, Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> wow. So, um, so I don't know. We'll see, I guess. I guess I guess time will tell if we're going to be able to try these things. 
I'm, yeah, I'm assuming you will. can get. <laughs> oh yeah, because you're a federal uh, federal agent. You're in the I work, FBI. I work for a secret agents. It's a society. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that you know that's just it's part of the game, Dad. It's part of the the way to go. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. But uh, I mean, you have to be really careful if you had THD will work and. Bad things could happen. Ever watch Reefer Madness? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's some dangerous stuff. But anyways, on to um, the next article. Um, so Carlsberg is to replace plastic ring can holders with recyclable glue. Huh. Recyclable glue. So, so they glue the cans together? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, it's they. Cool. I mean, if you look at the picture, um, oh, you guys don't see it on the stream, but um, it's actually cans that are kind of uh, glued together, and you just pull pretty them apart. Cool. That's pretty cool. <laughs> That's actually a cool idea. You know, honestly, yeah. I hate those freaking plastic ring things on cans. I always thought they were a horrible design. They need to go away, not just because of environmental reasons, but because I hate them. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh, would you look at that? Huh. So, um, I thought that was pretty cool. <laughs> I mean, if it, if it works, said, the set will reduce plastic up to 76%. That's amazing. That's yeah. good. And honestly, those plastic things they put the like the four packs in are a pain in the ass. Yeah. They always have to course. pull it off and then it pops and then it shakes the can. And I <laughs> exactly. have to wait. Yeah. You know, so, you know, hopefully this, this comes through and like a lot of breweries catch on to it. I'm down for that. And hopefully the glue actually stick, you know, holds well where, you know, sometimes some people will pick it up by one or two cans and then it goes everywhere. I've had that happen even with the rings and, you know, the whole six pack comes undone, smashes on yeah. the floor. And there's a big mess to clean up. That's not fun. <laughs> it's a waste of beer. Yeah. So I guess, I guess there's been a, a trend on taking away plastics because of the whole, uh, you, you know, so. plastic, monster that's in the pacific ocean i think that's just like growing bigger and bigger you guys have heard about that right no oh yeah yeah there's a monster but they're trying to clean it up it's not just that but plastic error it's just not good for water it leaches things into the water it's bad for the environment is it radiation? so they're just trying to get rid of these you know disposable plastic things like straws and plastic rings of beer and you know, the things that people don't think to recycle, too. You know, you don't think to throw straws into the recycling. I don't think you can even recycle them. I don't think it's the right kind of plastic. Yeah, I don't think so. And, like, you know, every every town has its own list of things you can and can't recycle, and it's a little different everywhere. But Yeah, exactly. So, speaking of cans, Allagash White is coming to cans. So that's, yeah! Yeah! Uh, that's very that's good exciting. news. That's, that's very exciting. good news for me because I kind of I kind of limit myself to cans due to uh, fridge space. I have uh, I have too many fridges instead of a real fridge. <laughs> <laughs> so my beer space is limited to like that little cup holder in the in the door, or the or the can holder in the door. Yeah, not just that. Uh, I mean, I love I love cans. I mean, I love like you said, like the the portability of them, the fact that. Um, they take a blessed room, and yeah. the greatest thing and benefit of them, I think, is the fact that light doesn't get to the beer, and yeah, that's yeah. what ruins the beer. So, yeah, we so talked about exciting. this before on other podcasts, but you've seen a lot more breweries canning. Even um, one that catches my eye most of the times when I go to the stores, Delirium Tremens in cans. Really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. So, and like, I, everyone is doing it. Every single, even like, uh, I don't know whoever, but. It's just the, the the trend of here's a can. I talked about this before too. Like you can bring it portability. You, it's easily crushable into a small garbage. So I like cans. I'm all about cans too. Yeah, um, I am too. I, I'm I'm really curious on how the cans are gonna, the I guess the metal the aluminum is gonna affect the taste of it. Like you know, like I said in the last podcast, I've been getting into the uh, the twisted teas, and I had I had 
the twisted tea in the can versus the the glass. Gla- the can was way better taste and drinkability than the glass. It, hmm. it was a world of a difference. I think the canning process too is a little bit more. Um, what's the word? It's like more precise, maybe than the bottling, where like air is not present. There's less mm. air present, or oh. it's carbonated more properly. That's true, because there's always that little like inch or two of air at the top of a bottle, but yeah. a can probably not much air in there at all. So there's less air in the can, and there's absolutely zero light that can get into there to affect any kind of ingredients. And maybe they're more. Maybe the aluminum is more temperature like controllable, or, or less. The glass. Yeah, there's might. also there's also a liner inside of all the cans, so they, so you don't get the uh, taste of aluminum or anything in them. Yeah, maybe maybe glass heats up a little bit differently than aluminum too, so that the well, temperature like, stays more controlled. That's true. You know what? That's a good point though. The glass probably insulates the beer better in terms of temperature fluctuations. I would imagine the the. Um, well, that's one of the the pluses of uh, a can is the fact that it it cools down very quickly. You th- could throw it into a cooler; it cools down very quickly. Yeah. But it, that could also be one of the downfalls. I never actually thought of that. I just thought of that now. The fact that it probably will fluctuate more in temperature. Right. The material. Yeah. So uh, speaking of cans, um, you're gonna see a lot more stovepipe cans. You guys know the stovepipe cans, right? No, what's, what's that? that? <laughs> <laughs> I know. I thought it was a funny name. It's it's, it's stovepipe cans are pretty much just the 19 ounce cans that are um, a little bit between you know the 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 24 ounce cans and the pint cans. <laughs> so it's just enough beer. It's not too much. Not too little. Um, it's the same width as um, like a like a 12 ounce can of beer. Okay. So it, it takes up almost the same amount of room, and it's a little, but it's just taller. That's oh, yeah. why they call them stovepipe because they're skinnier. I've seen those around. Um, yeah. They, they are cool looking. Um, not so good for me though in my mini fridge situation because they don't fit <laughs> yeah. in the in the little column. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it's funny because uh, Dale, you know Dale's Pale Ale, they uh, yeah, they kind of pioneered the whole can thing. You know, they were one of the first breweries to pioneer of cans. Um, well, in terms of craft beer, sorry. Let me rephrase that because cans have been around for a long time. <laughs> but for high quality beer to be in cans, that, that's what I meant to say. But because, um, you know, cans before that were considered like, you know, like Schlitz or Budweiser. You know, that's what you get in cans. You'd rarely ever get a craft beer in cans. But uh, they also pioneered now the um, the stovepipe can. They kind of started the trend in 2012. You actually see, I kind of really love the stovepipe can of uh, Dogfish Head uh, Sequench. That's mm-hmm. a great beer to kind of just pound down. Yeah. You got to come to the brew pub with us next time, Chris. Yeah, and no, I would love to go to um, Dogfish Head. Yeah, it's awesome. We're old. We'll take a tour. It's like ten bucks. You go on the tour. It's like a mile and a half or something like that. They take you to the distillery. It's re- it's really fun. Yeah, I mean, I, and I just love. I, I mean, I love what Dogfish Head kind of stands for, and I love their their um their zest for experiments. Yeah. Experimenting, uh-huh. like Sam Caligione. That's how you say his last name, right? I have no idea. I don't know. I think it's Caligione. I don't know why it's such a complex last name. Man. I just call him Sam. <laughs> Sam C. Sam C. Sam C. He's a cool guy. He actually has a really cool um thing um on uh what you call it on uh we feast what is it the on YouTube live not YouTube live but on YouTube it's called uh you never watch the show Hot Ones they also yeah. have another show I just got Tiff sent me that today hold on it's something he did something with a beer with um capsaicin in it or hep- pepper spray oh. Pepper spray. Hold on, I'm gonna find it. Yeah, um, it's uh, yeah, no, this uh, I always forget. Let me see. Well, first of all, it's on the First We Feast channel. Okay, which is a great YouTube channel. Maybe one day Fat Foodaholics will get to be as good as that, but I doubt it. Mm. Um, 
<laughs> but uh, the name of the show is That's Odd, Let's Drink It. Yes. And it's pretty awesome. I would suggest anyone to watch that. Um, yeah, so Tiff and... sent me that this afternoon, a little article about they made a beer with either pepper spray or right now, but... That sucks. I thought I thought she sent me a text, but anyway, yeah, they made a really spicy beer, and it was That's on awesome. that, it was on that show that you're talking about. See, I, I love spicy things, but like spicy beers, there's only a certain point I like them being spicy. Yeah, no, like I can't drink a lot of spicy beer. It's not fun. Yeah, there's something about like drinking spicy liquid. It just like just kills your stomach or something. I don't know. It's just. Mm. And it, it goes down. And you just want to cough. It's just horrible. <laughs> yeah. Usually, you you want the beer to quench the whatever you just ate that was spicy. Yeah, exactly. So, so it's, you're trying to quench yourself, and you're just. Oh, so the pepper spray beer is a stout. It's a milk. It's a milk coffee stout. Huh. So maybe the milk kind of like counteracts the spiciness. <laughs> yeah, it says a moderately sweet stout, which gives off spicy nutmeg mm. and espresso aroma. With a palate warming chili spiced finish. I mean, I, I would Sounds try nice. It. Yeah. That sound good. <laughs> I would try it. And that's the thing, too. At the brew pub and the brewery, there's, there's exclusive things that are there that they, I don't know if they experiment constantly or they just are always brewing new beers, but there's always weird stuff there that you would never, you'll never find it anywhere else in the country but at the brew pub or at the that's brewery. Awesome. They, it's almost probably like almost like beta, right? Like, like beta yeah. beers. Yeah. Like where they just they test out the beers there. And people start to like it. They can put it out in the mass market. It's brilliant, actually. It's really. I good. think they do an employee brew, like like that's part of a perk of working there is, you get to brew a beer on your own and see if it catches on. They get to use your own creativity and your own thought process. Wow. And, so it's almost like he's using like the whole thing of the um. The platform that Google uses, because Google does the same thing. They have, you know, they they let um, people that work employees at Google, they let them kind of go off and do their own thing. So that's yeah, what, that's, that's, that's what that's he does. Awesome. I, I'm pretty sure it's an employee. It's at least one tap a week or a month or so that that beer is on, and it was created for them. That's really cool. Yeah, yeah, we really we smart. have to go there soon. Wow, that's awesome. Just come here, and then we'll, we'll take the truck to the ferry. We'll split the ferry cost, and we'll go. As long as no hurricanes hit, I'm good. Yeah, we're not going now, though. It's going to be like 12-foot seas. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, that wouldn't. we'd probably uh, get pretty sick on that ferry. I don't even know if it's still, it would run at that time. No, nah, I don't think they would. They shut them down. But... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so on to other news. Uh, so uh, we talked about this last week. Uh the whole thing where, um, I think it was last week, Cleveland Browns, you know, you know that amazing team, Cleveland Browns, how they're doing uh, amazing. They're just winning every team? game. Not really. They never won a game, apparently. Is that soccer? No, they're... Um, Baseball? It's, 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 uh, <laughs> it's football. <laughs> oh, football. <laughs> no, no, I'm just, I, I, I'm really bad with sports. See, see, Lee brought this up last, last week, so, but, uh. The cool thing about it, what's related to beer, is apparently they've lost so many games, but like, like you know, stepped up their game, and they're like, let's put a beer fridge, in you know the Cleveland Browns like like fan, brew brew brewery not breweries pubs, and uh, they locked it up, and if Cleveland Browns ever won a game, they would unlock the fridge <laughs> and get free Bud Light. <laughs> so we talked about this. They've never <laughs> they're, won they're a game ever. Some, they don't win a game. So <laughs> apparently, like, recently, they tied in a game. And it was a big deal. All their fans were, like, tweeting Bud Light. They're like, can we open up the beer fridges now? <laughs> and unfortunately, no. They, they they wouldn't open it up. Um, yeah, so. <laughs> That's, That's awesome. I guess, it. I mean, it's it kind of, you know, makes it more exciting, I think, you know. I would probably watch more of the games. Yeah, it's more of an incentive to win, and you know, you you see your team win, and then open a beer fridge full, you know. Yeah, that's exciting. <laughs> and I actually have I have the picture up on the stream um, for those those viewers. 
Um, yeah, it's just a fridge with a, a chain around it. It's a Bud Light in it. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> I thought it'd be a little bit more high tech. Like they'd be like Wi-Fi enabled. Like the like instead of just the chain and a lock, because anyone could just break that chain. I think, but <laughs> but whatever. <laughs> So that's cool. So, um, have you guys heard about there's so there's a new um, hop coming out? A new hop, like a new variety of hop. Yeah, and, and OSU developed hop. Um, Oregon State University um, developed. It's called the Strata Hop. So, um, so that should be interesting. Um, it's kind of cool. So it's kind of like hops are kind of going the way of. Um, chili peppers, I guess they're cultivating new, um, new strains, new, new, no hot plants, new peppers, you know? So it's pretty cool. So I guess to try different. So I think pretty much what they're trying to do too is find hops that are deep, more disease like resistant and have certain, uh, flavors in them. Um, this one apparently, um, oh, let me see what it, I, I forgot what it was. Has a certain flavor to it. I should really research this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but this is the why recent people watch this podcast because um, at any time, it's like it's like watching a car crash. You know, you never you don't know when it's gonna <laughs> crash. <laughs> you don't know when it's just gonna hit the fan. <laughs> <laughs> the stream might not work. I don't know. No, okay. So um, the hop has flavors of guava, passion fruit, and grapefruit, orange zest, zest, and dank earth and lemongrass. Nice. Has That's all those flavors. That's like every aspect of every single hop ever, all built into one hop. <laughs> yeah, it's like ever watch, ever ever watch, um, you know, like uh, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, and the guy had the the the. the everlasting gobstopper or whatever yeah. Yeah. yeah it goes to different flavors it's like that but in a hop it's the gobstopper it's the gob hopper it's the gob hopper, <laughs> gob hopper. <laughs> do they give you um specs on it like what's the alpha acid comp crap what's the, like the breakdown of it oh yeah like like how bitter it is yeah no this doesn't go that far into it um but yeah i mean if, if I, the more i find out about it we can i'll bring it up um, so this this is when, you know you listeners should go on next week or two weeks from now because we'll bring we'll we'll give you more information on this hop because I know you've just you're just waiting for more information on this hop on the Strava Strava hop Strava hop I'm we're gonna brew with that's a serious hop too oh that's awesome okay the so what is like what is that the flavors of that more so very very bitter it's very oh, acidic. Okay. It's very, uh, it'll, if you eat one, it'll give you heartburn for like three days. Oh, <laughs> I think it has the highest alpha acid of any hop. I could be mistaken. It's, it's very high. It, it adds a very distinct t- taste to the beer. So you don't really need to use as much of it or is it more so, um, just that flavor profile that you're looking for? No, you don't need to use as much of it, I think. Okay. And okay. it's just an extreme it's an extremely flavored. It's it yeah. It's extremely distinct. Put it that way. Um, hmm. And I'm not sure if it's readily available, but you know you see it here and there to pop up. You know they brew a beer, a brewery brew a beer with Equinot hops. And you'll know it when you taste that beer. It'll give you something different. It'll give you something like the oh wow that's that's unique. You get you'll very you'll get a very instant taste of what i'm talking about i need to keep an eye out on that one i, I i'm sure i've had beers that have had that in there i just never really thought about it when it's done you drive down the parkway to exit 82 go to heavy reel and we will uh we'll show you what it's all about <laughs> nice <laughs> nice hopefully it will i think you i think we're good with uh hurricanes not hitting now nah, it's just gonna show. rain like this bitch it's gonna rain and rain and rain. But yeah, we'll be brewing that beer on the twenty third. So I think it's two to three weeks turnaround time on it, depending on the size. 
and then after that, you know, we have a huge invite. I think it makes 90 something gallons, but we're only going to yield 60 or 70. Could be less. Wait, wait, wait. How many gallons? Wait, what did you say? It's 90. <laughs> 90 barrels, not 90 gallons. Wait, no, no. Still, that's, that's, that's. So you're making a beer that has 90 barrels of beer? Yes. Dude, that's amazing. Yeah, a couple of us are working with the guy, the owner of Heavy Reel. He's letting us brew beer there with him. <laughs> it's going to be fun. Dude, that's awesome. So is it, it's going to be called Ted's Beer? It's going to be called The Dirty. Oh, The Dirty. The Dirty. Nice. <laughs> that's Dude, all I I'm can looking... tell you. It's, a, it's an I'm IPA. Look... I'll try it. All right, I'm going to grab a beer. Hold on a second. Steve, what are you drinking? I don't think uh, I don't think you mentioned it. This is um, Two Brothers Outlaw Mosaic IPA. Two Brothers is that local? Yeah, Two Brothers is uh, they're just out shot it outside of Chicago. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, they always make a good beer. You ever get any Three Floyds? I I yeah, I've had a few Three Floyds. Those are really good. Yeah, are they hard to come by? Those are pretty interesting. No, not really. My buddy's out there now. He's all excited because it's like on tap everywhere in Chicago. Mm-hmm. He's like, dude, this is insane. Three Floyds everywhere. <laughs> yeah, they're out of uh, Indiana, I think. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So that's it with beer news. Um, you know, I just wanted to end this podcast with a little discussion i saw an article that kind of frankly pissed me off but i don't know i'm I'm curious what you guys think about this is it elon musk smoking pot on joe rogan's podcast (laughs) no but that you know that really pissed me off because he he fired workers that smoked pot and he's allowed to smoke pot on the freaking thing yeah he's the owner they need to no they need to change their their uh whatchamacallit their uh policy he, he does whatever he wants. He's Elon Musk. Nah, actually, I really yeah. don't care that much. He can smoke pot, whatever he wants to do. Yeah, do what he wants, dude. You're Elon <laughs> Musk. <laughs> but I can see why why people that work there are kind of pissed off. True. Right. Some people. True. Um. So, anyways, this article. You know, it's on Business Insider. Here are the most the ten most popular beers in America. As millennials threaten the industry, what the? Why? Why are they blaming? Why do they always have to blame the millennials for this shit? Damn millennials! Come on. They want to try myself like, a millennial. Different beers. They don't want to just drink the same old beers. What's I up, know, millennials? What's on? Yeah, I'm gonna this? put. I'm gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> put this article up on the stream. Oh. Yeah, it's a. It's just a. It's a picture of Bud Light on a picnic table, and in big bold letters. Here are the 10 most popular beers in America as millennials threaten the industry. You know, like, and this is not one of the first articles I've seen from Business Insider. They just want to blame the millennials on everything. Like, what the hell? First of all, there's no such thing as generations. We're all the same. We're all people. Ugh, I don't know. What do you guys think? Are you as uh, annoyed as these people? Generations? Are? Uh... You never heard about that? Has to do with, like... So generations are a myth. Yeah, like they say we're Generation X and that we're millennials in our age group, but like I don't. I mean, think obviously, we are. there's no there's no denying that we're born a certain time and we're, there's a group of people born at certain yeah. times, but but to stereotype people like acting a certain way based yeah. on when they were born apparently I'm, is is a myth. Like, I don't consider really myself true. millennial. That, that's ageism. Well, there's I mean even I think millennials is like a huge isn't it like a twenty year like range which is like yeah. you know us like we're i think all considered older millennials and we're like we've grown up like without the internet and without cell phones but yeah younger millennials haven't like since 2000 whatever 2007 there's been huge changes to the way things have happening and it's just like it's affected all of us from you know young kids to older adults and the world's just different now <laughs> there's no yeah. you know no denying that i mean yeah. that- there are okay. age, which there's. I'm sorry. There's there's trends with the the ages and everything, but uh, this list is is nonsense. Like, who doesn't drink most of these things? Heineken, Bud, Bush, 
Now, there, these are like the things that under 21 year olds would drink, you know, like the, the Bush Light, the Modelo, you know, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Natty Ice. Come on. <laughs> like, this is, this is, Natty this Ice is on the list? That's thing. funny. <laughs> this, this is like, you know, you're paying someone to buy you beer at the, you know, the grocery store. <laughs> you know, that that's that, that's that stuff, you know? Yeah. That's not a millennial thing. Oh my god! Yeah, it's honestly, it's just. Um, also, I mean, so we like drinking more crap beers now. That's probably what it is. Yeah, we're drinking more of that, so there's less. There's more competition now for these breweries. Yeah. So you 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 know you don't just have the choice of you know Corona as the Mexican lager, you know. <laughs> right. Yeah. Hey, you I mean, I you. think. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't really even see a divide over age groups. Like I run into plenty of like older. Older people who are like really into craft beers and stuff like that. Yeah, I, I always just hate when I come across articles like this. Um, so, for any uh, viewers out there, if there isn't any, um, what do you think? <laughs> um, type it in the in the chat. Um, I would like to hear what your opinion is, and if if you if you if your opinion differs from us, um, we're gonna kick you off <laughs> and curse you off. Not right away though. We want to hear what you have to say. Yeah, no, I'm just kidding. It's actually, actually, we to be honest, I, I really want to see what your opinion is. If it's different, great. I'm curious why. What makes your opinion better than ours? <laughs> 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 yeah, Miller Lights on here. Budweiser. Coors. What's number one? Bud Light. Bud Light. This is this is the beer beginners. Uh, you know, this is like the starter pack. <laughs> yeah, beer starter pack. <laughs> like this is really nothing like so we talked about this before but tom i'm curious what what's your first beer that you've ever tried um corona oh uh, <laughs> no uh, uh it's either pbr or bud one of those two i think i don't i i i've tried corona a couple of times not a big fan uh, I'm not a big fan of Corona or Heineken. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what was your? That was your first beer. I think. I think it was like PBR or Bud. One of those two. Yeah, I think it might have been one of those two. Maybe, maybe, maybe Natty. Natty Light. <laughs> <laughs> oh, maybe Miller. I don't, I'm not too sure. Oh yeah, Miller Light. Yeah. It's a, That's it, another it, one of those. A while ago. Wait, is Miller Light on this this list? I'm sure it's on this list. Oh yeah, it is. Yeah, Michelob Ultra is on the list, which is weird to me. Popular, yeah. Michelob Ultra is really popular with older people. Yeah, yeah. Maybe that one's in trouble. (laughs) I don't think. (laughs) I don't think Miller Lite is going anywhere. There's always, you know, always going to be lots of people wanting to Miller Lite. Yeah, Light or whatever. I would drink that. I like that. Yeah, I actually just they just had a uh, someone left a, a twelve pack of Modelo here. I went through that pretty quickly. That was actually pretty enjoyable. Yeah, Modelo. Yeah, Modelo is pretty good. I like Modelo. All right, Chris, light beer podcast. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So the next podcast, let's just talk about light beers. Light let's beer challenge. Talk about. The light I actually kind of miss. I've been having all these like good beers lately. I want to try some of these beers again. It's horrible. Start, starting from Heineken, I want to try Heineken. I kind of miss, uh, I, I kind of miss that flavor of, of skunkiness. But then again, Heineken isn't usually supposed to be skunky. It's just because we have those green bottles to choose from. Yeah. Some people I'll grab that in the can. I will. I'll say this. I. I've, I've I don't actually, know if I've ever I, tried Michelob Bolster. I've had Heineken that I actually really liked. I really enjoyed. I did a job. I worked for um, the AV company. We did their AV for Heineken in White Plains and they have um, a sub uh, a, a tap at the, in their room and it's on like a uh, it's chilled so it's like constantly at like 32 degrees and it was the greatest coldest <clears throat> pour that I've ever had and it didn't taste like a Heineken out of a can or out of a bottle it was mm. it was amazing and that like and I'm not a person that likes Heineken, but mm-hmm. it's so refreshing. You know, it was so different though. 
Like they they had the they had the line running with like liquid nitrogen to That's freeze awesome. the top. I would try that. Yeah, that sounds good. Uh, that reminds me of a beer that I had in in London called uh, Guinness Extra Cold. Ooh. Have you ever heard of that? Yes, because of you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they 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 take Guinness and they throw it. I guess they do a similar thing. They bring it through like a cold tap, maybe nitrogen or something, yeah. and it comes out super cold, and it's pretty amazing. Uh, it sounds delicious. It's just funny because at the time before I went to London, everyone there was all these weird like like stereotypes or misconceptions about what the food and beer would be like over there everyone first of all everyone said the food would be horrible <laughs> for some reason everyone's like the food's horrible in london okay it was actually pretty decent it was good um other thing people said is they they serve you warm beers which was kind of silly too and then the first thing that i had over there was like guinness extra cold i'm like this is the opposite <laughs> of what people say <laughs> but uh yeah, I think they just say warm beers because, like, Cascales are still kind of popular over there. Well, actually, I read an article recently. Cascales are kind of going on their way out, unfortunately. Uh, really? Yeah, yeah. I like um, a Cascale. I yeah. know, exactly. That's one thing. That's one. I remember maybe 10 years ago, they were trying to revive yeah. Cascales. Yeah. You don't really see that much anymore, though. You don't see many Cascales around. No. Guess not. But. Um, right back. And those aren't even it. those aren't even like warm. They're just not as no. cold as no. They're, they're like, not as they're cold. Like, and that's that's yeah. They're like European room temperature, which is like in the sixties, which is cooler than. Uh, it's not warm. Yeah. <laughs> See, like I like I like European room temperature. That's like my room temperature at home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess Americans just like it warmer. I don't know why. Maybe I'm I'm Euro- I'm a European at heart. Yeah. I did that DNA test. I was like fifty percent. Uh, Irish, so there you go. I mean, I don't, I don't mind warmer uh, beers, but what is this? Uh, <laughs> what, what did you just throw across the room? Cat toy. Oh, a cat toy. Okay. Um, I thought yeah, it was something I else. I I'm glad. I I'm, like I'm, I'm relieved it was a cat toy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they've been swarming me. I'm, I'm, I'm sitting on their chair. Um, but yeah, I don't mind the warm, warmer beers. Um, I would really like to go overseas to. Yeah, London, they're supposed to be Ireland. warm. I want to try that because I've been told like the Guinness that's poured over there is so much better than what we have here. I can see why because like I, I see different bartenders pour it, and a lot of the bartenders can't pour it properly. That make that makes the whole world of difference. Is how they pour yeah. it and how it's, and even how it's tapped and everything, how it's served. I've had really bad Guinness. I've had really good Guinness. There was a bar in the city actually. Uh, it's probably still around. Solanche. So had a uh, pretty good Guinness. Yeah. Oh man, remember remember Steve going over there? We would have um. Those were the days. Buy, the good old buy days. one, buy one, get one free Guinness. Yes, buy right? one, get one free. Yeah. For yeah. Dude, happy how, hour. How, that was amazing. I loved yeah. it. Yeah. Where is it all the time? It was time. on. Was it on the Bowery and like? It was in the Bowery, yeah. Second or third street, something like that. Yeah, yeah, Tom, we're, we're gonna have to go down there after work one day. I'll show it. To oh, you. after work uh, during you know, lunchtime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. Uh, I'm I'm yeah. I'm I'm down for that. I, I love Guinness. Yeah. And then Steve, you're gonna have to come back to, to New York and. I'll come. There. I'll come and have some Guinness with you after work. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so, uh, does anyone have any questions? Questions of the week? The one person that's watching? <laughs> <laughs> it's probably Ted or me. No, it's definitely <laughs> you. I'm not even watching. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyways, anyone that, it, the one person that's watching, um, I noticed the stream was going in and out. Uh, I apologize for that. We'll fix that for next week. But anyways, um, or the next two weeks from now. But uh, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And would you guys have any have any last statements before we leave? No. Drink local. Beer. Beer is good. Beer, beer, Drink beer. Drink local.
That's it. Beer, beer. beer. Well, cool. All right. Oh, for a beer. See you guys next week. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>